Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude. Today is a short video and we're going to be talking all things stack height and also venture out and discuss drop. To understand drop, you need to understand stack height. And both of those two terminologies you would have heard thrown around the running scene now for years and years. It's a technical term that we use to categorize shoes within the marketplace. But to understand how they all work and what their importance are, you need to understand the actual relevance of the terminologies we're talking about. So in today's discussion, we'll take a deep dive, look into that. Talk about the midsole densities, what happens within midsoles, give you all the information that you need at home to understand this technical terminology better. So let's get stuck in. Okay, team, let's talk all things drop. But before we do, we need to understand what stack height is. Stack height is the measurement used for the maximum height of the midsole of a running shoe. So I'm holding the Olympus here from Ultra. Now, the stack height of this shoe is 33 millimeters, and it is measured from the heel of the shoe. They take the 12th percentile, so heel being zero, the front of the shoe being 100, 12% into the shoe, which is around 32 millimeters for a Euro 42. That's a men's size nine for the back to the front. They leave the sock liner in and from the central point of the heel through here, they're measuring the amount of foam which compresses down on touch point. So for this shoe, it's 33 millimeters. So just to reference that again, zero here, 100 at the front being percentile. So the 12th percentile into the actual heel of the shoe is where the stack is measured. Now this shoe happens to be zero drop. So at the heel, it's exactly the same as the forefoot. And there is variance between the three shoes in front of us there. So that's how stack height is measured. Okay, to understand drop, obviously we touched on stack height and where that's measured in the heel. The drop is the difference between what's measured in the back, being the heel, and what is measured in the forefoot. So as we touched on previously, 12% from zero to from zero being at the back of the shoe to the heel is exactly where they measure that stack height at the back of the shoe. And it's 75% from the heel to the forefoot is where it's measured in the front half. Context with that is it's 203 mils from the back to the front for a Euro 42, which is around a men's size 9 US. Now, there are some elements of variance with how brands measure this stack height and drop, but most of the time they do try to stick within that World Athletics guidelines with reference to where it's exactly measured. And just to confirm again, it is the central point of the forefoot, which is really important to make sure that we get that part of the stack height and the front half measured correctly. So using the Clifton here in front of me, I've got a 32 mil heel, 27 mil forefoot for that offset of five millimeters. Now that's an immense in a ladies, it's actually 29 and 24 for that variance of five millimeters through there. And what I wanted to touch on is you can see through here, I'm holding the Olympus here from Ultra. It is a zero drop, it's the same 33 in the heel, 33 in the forefoot, but you can see that the actual wall of the shoe comes up a quite a lot higher in the back of the shoe. And that can be a little bit of an optical illusion, but it is important to know that it's the internal measurement, which is exactly where that stack height is taken at the back of the shoe. So it's the walls can be a bit deceiving, but it's the internal measurement, which is the most important part. Okay, so why is stack height and heel to toe drop important? Well, it's an objective measure for us to be able to categorize people or categorize shoes into the right um, offerings for you, the running community. Other than obviously geometry of foam and also the category in which we see with posted shoes, neutral shoes or stable neutral shoes, it's just another objective measurement for us to put the right shoe on someone's foot. Now, we have this conversation every single day with every single person who comes through to get fitted. So with reference to the the heel to toe offset. First things first, we need to understand where they're coming from, what surface they are running on, and exactly what shoe they have used previously to give us an understanding of what tolerance they can take with regards to heel to toe drop. Going back a decade, we would see most shoes from around, most mileage shoes that is, from around eight millimeters right up to 12 millimeters. That was where 90% of the shoes were actually presented to the market, and that's from all brands, be it Nike, Asics, Brooks, New Balance, you name it. Most brands played within that window. Now we've seen obviously that being stretched out quite a lot. Now the biggest discussion point for us here is understanding what happens on that Z axis. Now I'll do my best to explain that. We have the X and the Y axis which is that movement through here and that's where we categorize the uh, support systems, be it, be it overpronation, neutral, or supination. Z-axis is what happens through this transition through here. Now, that's where the heel-to-toe offset comes into that conversation point. Now, if a shoe is a five millimeter heel-to-toe drop and it's on a higher stack with very soft geometry of foam, what we'll tend to find is that shoe will run a lot lower anyhow. So that's where we understand 
the weight of the person, where they make contact with the ground. So if it's heel first, we're going to sink in a lot more into that heel. If they're midfoot or forefoot, generally speaking, they'll have lower first initial point of contact with the ground shock metrics. That's impact force coming through the body. And their horizontal force will be marginally higher. So the horizontal force is the amount of force which is applied on contact when we decelerate through our mid-starts phase. And that's terminology we, we use downstairs in the run DNA rooms um, at here at Sportitude Running. So we can actually use run scribe foot pods. We measured those real key accelerometer points with regards to the impact and the braking Gs. We measure pronation velocity and a lot of that has to do with the amount of stack height on offer from a running shoe brand and also how that person reacts to that stack height and also heel to toe drop. So they're all very important, very technical terms which we've just thrown at you through here. But it's vitally important to understand why brands actually have variances in regards to heel to toe offsets what density of foam they're using, and a lot of the time now, which more so than ever, what materials are they using within that midsole? So are they using carbon plates? Are they using a combination of carbon and nylon? Nylon, are they using carbon rods? There is a lot of ingredients that goes into the midsole, which will determine what the appropriate amount of heel-to-toe drop a brand will use. And obviously being here at Sportitude Running, we are very, very lucky that we have been this way for the last 10 years. We actually participate in a lot of the prototype testing for brands. Not just myself, but there's a number of our team downstairs are given prototype one and prototype two from a lot of brands and a lot of the time they will play around with the stack height, play around with the heel to toe offset to understand what the outcome of comfort and outcome of performance is for the runner out there. So for us it's great to be obviously involved in that testing um, phase through the prototyping but it also gives us a great understanding of where brands are thinking or what they're looking at for their progressive thoughts around, around engineering and actually sort of advancing their midsoles into the future. The other thing too is it's vitally important, I feel, to know that yes, there are some changes within brands with the stack height, but as I touched on a minute ago, it's more around the softness of the foam and how your body reacts to that, which is the most important part of how you will then perform on that Z-axis as we talked about before. The softer the shoe, the more you sink into it. The firmer the shoe, the more you stay on top of that midsole. So that's where it comes into play and that's where the conversation is usually led with our discussion points downstairs here at Sportitude Running. Okay, the other thing to talk about is is when doesn't stack and when doesn't heel to toe drop really matter? Now, I say that tongue in cheek because there is obviously a vitally important part of the overall shoe makeup that is categorized for you, the running community. It does matter, but when doesn't it become a vitally um, important piece of information? Now, I'll probably start off with racing shoes first because racing shoes... Um, there is limitations of what brands can do to make them legal. So they're obviously, they have to play under the 40 millimeter stack height ruling. So that's the heel through here. So... Again, with racing shoes, we are throwing a lot of overall support out the window because they are incredibly light in regards to their offering. So there's a lot of instability inside racing shoes, but it's all about comfort, speed, and performance. So ground contact time, flight ratio, and also the acceleration point out of gate cycle. Again, going back uh, eight years before we saw carbon plates really come into play, it was lower the heel to toe um, drop and also lowering the stack height to get more ground reaction force, not making it overcomplicated with the amount of foam between the base of your foot and the ground. So you can naturally get that responsive kick and feel just with the force you would be putting through that midsole. Now, fast track eight years to where we are today, 2023, stacks are becoming higher regulations being under 40 millimeters but we can see that brands are playing around with the softness of foams none more so than nike of course probably the market leader in this space zoom x midsole is a very very soft compound of foam extremely soft so therefore you can compress through that midsole engage that carbon plate to get that propulsive feel so why isn't it important in that discussion well it's more about performance comfort and feel so are we getting speed of acceleration at a gate cycle whether that's in a 38 mil stack a 40 mil stack a 36 mil stack it really doesn't matter for that athlete specifically through there. We do sometimes consider how far they're running and where they're sort of putting their performance shoe. Is it 10K, half marathon, marathon? That's might then we might start entertaining that stack height conversation, but more or less it's more around performance. The other real leading one, which we touched on a minute, a minute or two ago, was around 
arch support or guide rails for those mild overpronators. Now, brands are ever so slightly altering how we measure or how we measure the outcome of success for overpronation. And instead of using, obviously, dual density foams in the medial side, we're seeing brands using guide rails or like what ASICs will be doing in the near future, changing that density pod through the medial side in the new K-130. But brands are actually looking at velocity of movement from your contact point to your mid-stance. And a lot of that is to do with the softness of foam and a little bit to do with the heel-to-toe drop, not so much as it used to be gone years gone by so there there is obviously an element of importance but there are some categories in which we don't really overly take it too seriously rocker shoes with regards to your category being your bondis and your endorphin shifts just to name a couple there from a couple of brands out there the heel to toe offset does play an important role but it's not vital so whether it be four mil five or six millimeters it's more around how we engage that four foot to roll out of your gait cycle not necessarily the difference between the heel to toe drop in those shoes as well. So thank you for tuning into this conversation in and around stack height and heel to toe drop. Obviously we've covered a few different categories through here with the Ultra, the Clifton and the Mizuno Wave Rider. I do, we have done a little bit more of a deeper dive into three specific categories. So we have a category being zero to four millimeters. We've got five to nine and we categorize a group of running shoes around that 10 plus. So usually 10 to 12 millimeter offset. If you want to sort of de- uh, take a deeper dive look into those videos, um, we'll be shooting those over the next week and you can find that on our YouTube channel. So head across to Sportitude on YouTube, hit subscribe, stay connected and we'll keep pumping out shoe reviews like this for you, the running community. So thank you very much for tuning in um hope you've got something out of this and enjoyed what we have presented to you today until next time guys stay safe be kind to one another happy running and we'll see you at the road take care